On day one, I spawned in as a tarantula with a bunch of other spiders around me. Whoa, this must be my family. And that big tarantula must be my dad. Celio, we're running low on web. Could you go and fetch some string from the forest nearby? Even though you're still small, your venomous teeth should keep you safe. Thanks, dad. I'll be back in no time. Oh, and Celio, no matter what you do, do not step on the red moss. I kept his warnings in mind and rushed straight into the forest. I noticed an ant in the distance when my tarantula instincts kicked in. I pounced on it and caught it in my web. I then poisoned the ant with my sharp teeth, and it wasn't long until I managed to kill it. Take that, you pesky ant. I kept on walking, when suddenly I heard a squish below me. Ugh. Uh, what was that? I turned around to look and saw a pile of moss with my footsteps on it. I must have stepped on it, but it doesn't look very red. I should be okay. I backed up, but felt the ground beneath me give out. And before I knew it, I fell straight into a deep cave. Ah! On day two, I was falling endlessly. Suddenly, there was a bright flash of light, and I saw the bottom closing in. So I braced for impact. But to my surprise, I was fine. Looks like the moss cushioned my landing. I looked around me and saw that I was in an ancient forest that was absolutely majestic. Now, how did I end up here? And more importantly, how can I get out? Uh, what was that? Suddenly, a woolly mammoth raced past me with a huge ancient bear chasing after it. And I thought the overworld was unsafe. As I said that, I got knocked from behind, leaving me with just one heart. I turned around to see what hit me and saw a king scorpion right on my tail. Wait, I don't even have a tail. I took off running, but the scorpion was way faster than me and was catching up fast. Thinking quickly, I used my spider powers to climb up a tree, losing the scorpion just in time. Phew, that was close. I looked at the view below me and saw all types of ancient creatures roaming around. And that's when I saw a broken down temple nearby with piles of bones all around it. It doesn't look very welcoming, but I need to find clues to where I am. And I mean, what's the worst that could happen? On day three, I made my way to the temple when I saw more and more bones lying around. I'm not ready to face whatever's in there yet. I need to get stronger first. I ran to a nearby tree and chopped down some wood and crafted myself a set of wooden tools. Hopefully this will at least keep the scorpions away. Way. As I turned to venture towards the temple, I heard a powerful voice address me from the side. And that's when I saw a massive saber-toothed tiger approach me. Who are you? And who dares to come into my trees? It's you, isn't it you? Uh, what on earth are you? I've never seen anything like you before. I could say the same thing about you. I fell through some sort of cave and I have no idea where I am. Can you help me? Hmm, interesting. Anyways, I'm in a rush. I don't have time to deal with your nonsense. I'm finally going to kill the abyssal golem that's been tormenting these forests for centuries. Let me come with you. Oh, fine. I do not have time to argue right now, but do not get in my way. The saber-toothed tiger led me back to the scary temple. I stayed back and watched from a nearby bush as the saber-toothed tiger went up to the temple and summoned the golem. Look who we have here, the saber-toothed tiger who I've heard so much about. I guess you're here to try and kill me. Try your luck and you'll end up as just another skull in my collection of bones. Thanks for the off, but I've had enough of your time. You're going down! The saber-toothed tiger leaped at the abyssal golem, but it wasn't long till the golem had overpowered him. You should have stayed out of my way. Just like each one of you rebels trying to oppose me, you'll make a fine addition to my sea of bones. You can kill me. I don't care. There's a hero who's been summoned into this dimension, and he'll finish this task for me, and for all of us. Wait, is he talking about me? It must be somebody else. That's what they all say. Anyways, it was nice knowing you. Next up, I'm going to your little rebel camp to kill them all. That's when the Abyssal Golem took one final step towards the Sabertooth Tiger and killed him with one last blow. No! Uh-oh. What do we have here? You don't look like you belong here. Could you be the hero that the tiger was talking about? Ha 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 ha! No way. You couldn't even kill a fly. Now scram before I crush you like the little bug you are. I knew better than to tempt my fate and fight him, so I took off running deep into the forest. Days four through five came around, and I knew that I wouldn't be safe here in this forest. I don't know much about that abyssal golem, but I know he's up to no good, and I bet he has some link to my home dimension. I need to get to the bottom of this. Staying out in the open was not an option in this realm, so I had to find a place to set up camp. It wasn't long before I spotted a massive clearing 
living in the forest and knew this would be the perfect place to build my tarantula hideout. I started building my home out of the wood that I had collected earlier and it was starting to look super nice. I also decided to spin some web and decorate my house with spider web to really make it feel like home. I should now be safe from all the craziness out there. I just wish I had somebody to share this home with. I was exhausted after a long day at work so I placed a bed next to my little cobwebs and went to sleep for the night. I woke up early on day 6 through 8 to some strange noises coming from outdoors. I went to go and check it out and saw a bunch of velociraptors breaking down my house. Ugh, I knew I should have placed torches around my home. What are you doing here? Get away from my home. Huh. Word around town here is you're the so-called hero here to try and kill the abyssal golem. We won't let that happen. What is all this hero talk about? I'm not here to kill anybody and I'm sure not a hero. Just please leave me alone. The raptors did not listen to me and started attacking me. I guess it's war then. I started fighting the raptors, but these guys were really tough. What do they feed you guys over here? They were getting the better of me, so I knew I had to get creative. I used my web to completely surround them and then weaved in and out of the fight, striking them without having to be worried about getting hit back. After a while, I finally managed to kill them. I'm glad I managed to live through that, but I've sure got to take better care of my safety. I made sure to place torches all around my home to keep any unwanted mobs from spawning and even built a scarecrow to hopefully keep the intruders out. Days 9 through 12 came around and I decided to go out on an adventure. Even though webs can hold off smaller enemies, I'm afraid if an ancient bear like the one from earlier finds me, I'll be in big trouble. I was looking for a cave to go find some iron in, when from the corner of my eye, I saw a little anteater surrounded by a group of golems. Oh no! They must be trying to hurt him. I need to go and help him. I made my way to try and save the anteater, but as soon as I got there, he had killed each and every one of the golems. Whoa! That was awesome! I could use a friend as strong as you to help take me down the abyssal golem. What do you say? Go with you? No chance. I'm a lone wolf. Besides, you just slow me down anyways. No, trust me. I have this cool base. But the anteater didn't want to hear what I had to say and left me alone in the forest. I started making my way back home and on the way, I spotted some strange hut in the distance. Ah, huh, I must have missed that earlier. I wonder who lives there. I didn't have time to go and visit though because night was coming and I could hear mobs all around me. I made my way back home exhausted after a long day. I was so tired that once I got in bed, I slept through all of day 13. But during my sleep, I had a nightmare that I encountered the abyssal golem. I heard that you've been causing havoc around these forests, killing groups of my minions. This is your last chance. Oppose my raid one more time, and it'll be the end of the line for you, little hero. But why did you kill the saber-toothed tiger earlier? He said you've been tormenting these forests and its inhabitants. I was banished into that temple eons ago, but I used my time locked up to hone my strength. And as soon as I got out, I killed everybody who stood in my way. This forest rightfully belongs to me, and everybody in it shall be my servant. I am the hero this forest needs, not you. I'm not going to let you keep hurting innocent creatures. I'm going to stop and nothing to kill you. You can try, little bug, but mark my words. The next time you see me, I won't give you a shred of mercy. The golem then rushed at me, and I woke up terrified about what happened. This is it. I can't let myself be bullied around like that. Tomorrow, it's time to make a change. I woke up bright and early on days 14 through 17 and got right to work. I headed deep into the forest and eventually found a cave and decided to head inside. And it wasn't long before I found a bunch of iron. I quickly upgraded my tools to stone and then got right to work. I'm in need of an upgrade. I started mining the iron, but it wasn't long till I was surrounded by a bunch of bats. And these guys did not look friendly. Ugh, not now. The bats charged at me, so I started fighting back with everything I had. Even though these guys were small, they packed a punch and really started to hurt me. Ugh, why are there so many of you? Where do you keep coming from? I was about to die, but just then, the same anteater from earlier showed up from deeper in the caves and killed them all with a couple swift moves. Whoa, that was awesome. Thanks so much for saving me. No problem. They've been annoying me lately anyways. I hope you've done some thinking about my offer. But once again, he left me before I even had time to finish my sentence. Why won't he come with me? I wonder where he's staying. That's so much better than with me. I didn't want to let that bring me down though. So as soon as I got home, I got right to work. I first built a couple of furnaces and set them up in the corner of my house. As 
I left my iron to smelt. I headed outside and built a farm, planting a bunch of seeds and other crops I had found along my journey. These will help keep me fed indefinitely. I didn't forget about my iron either, so to end the day off, I built myself an iron helmet and chest plate, and even had enough iron for a full set of iron tools. I then went to sleep after a couple successful days. I woke up on days 18 through 22 to a weird itchy sensation on my body. I got out of bed and saw an ant crawling on my bed. Ew! Get out of my house! I quickly swatted it away and then left my house. But that's when I realized my base had an ant infestation. There were ants crawling around everywhere. I tried killing them all, but more and more kept appearing. I'll have to handle these guys later. But for now, I have more important business to attend to. I went out to look for a bunch of sheep. They were gonna help me out with a project I wanted to work on later. As I was looking, I saw a bunch of ender whales fly past me through the air. Those creatures are beautiful. I bet those are the only guys in the forest the golem hasn't been able to control. I realized I had been following the whales for ages and found myself at the strange hut I saw earlier. I guess this must be fate. I think it's time to give this place a visit. I entered the hut on days 23 through 27 and to my surprise, it was completely empty. Apart from the weirdly decorated interior, somebody crazy must have lived here. What did you call me? Uh, what? Is somebody here? Just then, there was a bright flash of light and a wizard appeared in front of me. Whoa, that was awesome. Where did you come from? Don't mind me. I brought you here to talk to you. Well, actually, I brought myself here, not you. Who do you think guided the ender whale over my hoosh? This guy is crazy. I heard that too. But anyways, let's go on a walk. The wizard led me through the forest as he told me more about the abyssal golem. The golems were once a species of creatures who protected the forest, their leader being the alpha golem, the father of the abyssal golem. The abyssal golem wanted to take over his father's spot and control the jungle, but the alpha golem knew that he was too power hungry and manipulative to take over, so he banished the abyssal golem into the broken down temple you saw earlier. That's where he honed his powers until he grew strong enough to break free and he kill his father and the rest of the golems. That's when he took control of these lands and has ruled with an iron fist ever since, killing everybody that stood in his way. That's our issue. The saber-toothed tiger is one of the strongest rebel leader we had to fight him. And now that he's gone, the fate of the world is up to you. But I'm just a tarantula. How am I supposed to face him? Well, you are the chosen one after all. On days 28 through 32, the wizard told me of an ancient prophecy. Why does everybody keep saying that? I'm just a regular spider. Oh no, you're way more than that. That's when the wizard stopped me on the edge of a cliff, as if to tell me something important. There was a prophecy that after five centuries of the evil golem's rule, there would be a bright flash of light, and a hero would appear in the sky and bring peace to our lands. Trust me, if there would have been another creature that fell from the sky, I would have known. Sure, but I'm nowhere near strong enough to face him. And what about my family? I want to go back home eventually. If you help us out, we will find a way to get you back. But for new, this is your priority. Now listen carefully. There's an ancient ender leader who lives high up in the mountains in the north. Go and seek him out. He will train you to master your spider abilities. The wizard snapped his fingers and we arrived back at his little hut. Whoa! Will I be able to learn skills like that too? You just have to wait and see. I thanked the wizard and made my way back home on days 33 through 36. Worried the ants would have destroyed my whole base. But to my surprise, there was not a single ant in sight. You should have told me this place was full of tasty little bugs. I would have moved in with you in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? Not at all. Well, I'm glad you're here to stay. I could really use your help fighting the Abyssal Golem. What was your name, by the way? My name is Anthony. How about I call you Ant? Don't you think it's a bit weird naming me after my food? You are what you eat, am I right? I wanted to make Ant feel at home, so I made sure to build him a nice house next to mine. And I even built him an ant upstairs in case he got hungry. Thanks for your hospitality, Silio. Here's to a good friendship. On day 37 through 41, I went out to look for sheep, but this was a harder task than I thought. I found a bunch of weird animals on my journey, and even stumbled upon a tribe full of cactus people. Everything in this land seems so cool and powerful. The abyssal golem must be super strong if he's able to control them all with ease. I kept wandering around, and eventually found a little opening with tons of sheep standing around. You guys are coming home with me. As soon as I brought them home, I built an enclosure around them, making sure to leave in a little pool of water to keep them quenched. I I then used a bunch of different dyes that I had gathered along the journey to color the sheep brown and black. 
Finally, I crafted a pair of shears that I used to shear my sheep, and then got to work on a massive project. I started building a massive tarantula statue. I started off building the statue from the feet up. As a tarantula, I have eight legs, so this would be a large task, and I definitely didn't have the resources to finish it up now. But I got some good progress in, and I'm happy with how it's looking so far. Not bad! I woke up on days 42 through 46, to and frantically pacing around my room. What's going on, Ants? Are you okay? I need your help, Cilio. I went to go and visit my family just now and saw them being attacked by a massive magma turtle. I need your help, Cilio. I can't do this alone. I didn't hesitate at all and rushed out with Ant to go and save his family. Ant eventually led me to a village and it was already almost completely destroyed. What was that? I looked and saw the massive magma turtle shooting flames all around the village. I also saw a bunch of creatures locked up in a cage in the village. I don't know what to do, Cilio. I don't think we're strong enough to take it down. I have an idea, Ant. You sneak up to the cage and break your family out. I'll go and distract the turtle. I felt a massive surge of courage in my body, and that's when I transformed into a full-size tarantula with 14 hearts. Whoa! These new hearts will definitely come in handy in this fight. Hey, you big fat turtle. Come pick on somebody your own strength. <laughs> my master, the Abyssal Golem, warned me about you and your meddling. You won't stand a chance fighting me. I charged at the turtle, dodging his flame bursts and striking him with my iron sword. But for some reason, I felt like I wasn't even scratching him. My shell is made from the strongest resources on this planet. Your petty little iron sword is useless against me. The turtle then hit me just once, knocking me against a broken broken house in the village and leaving me with just half a heart. He then started approaching me and I knew I had to make a quick move. I quickly spun a wall of web in front of me and quickly fled just as the magma turtle shot its flamethrower at me. Ugh, if that's how strong the golem's minions are, I can't even imagine fighting the golem itself. But what was that about some super strong resources on this planet? Perhaps I'll have to find some of my own. I started making my way home on days 47 through 51 when I remembered I forgot Ant and his family at the village. Village. I started running back, but that's when I noticed a group of animals in the distance. I made my way closer, and that's when I noticed that Ant had successfully saved his family from the magma turtle and gotten out unharmed. Thanks so much for helping save us, Cilio, but now that our village is destroyed, we have no place to stay. Do you mind if we'd crash at yours? Anytime, guys. I brought Ant's family back home with me and decided to add a section to Ant's house to keep them sheltered. I knew they had been through a lot recently, so I made sure to build a new section extra nice for them, and I was really happy with how it turned out. You're the best, Cilio. Days 52 through 56 came around, and I had had enough of being bullied around by the evil creatures in this land. It was time to seek out the Ender Leader. I wasn't even sure I knew the way to the mountain he resides in, but I would walk as long as it took to get there. As I was stumbling through the forest, I got attacked by a massive ancient bear. I may not have been able to fight the magma turtle, but I should at least be able to face a stupid bear. Or so I thought. The bears in this dimension had more than just porridge for breakfast, as each hit of his knocked down many of my hearts at once. Why can't I beat anything in this dimension? Am I really that weak? I was getting battered by the bear, and I knew I had to escape. I found a nearby tree and quickly climbed up it to leave. But what I failed to remember was that bears can climb trees too. Oh no, I'm in trouble. I built myself a bridge out of web to the nearest tree. And as the bear tried to follow me across, my web gave up to the sheer force of his weight and snapped, leaving the bear to fall to his death. Phew, at least something's going my way today. That's when I once again spotted a group of ender whales flying over the distance. And I knew this was a sign. I followed the ender whales and it wasn't long until they led me right to the Grand Mountain. And on the peak, I saw a giant purple castle. I knew I could trust the wizard. Time to head up and find this ender leader once and for all. I started making my way up the mountain on days 57 through 61, and the journey up was treacherous. Along the way, I encountered a bunch of massive mammoths and other different species of saber-toothed tigers. I tried to sneak past them whenever I could, but I ended up getting into a tough fight with one of the tigers, and it nearly killed me. But I did manage to get the upper hand eventually. That was way too close for comfort. I can see how the golem's minions never made it up here. This place is scary. I then realized that I was nearly at the peak of the mountain. I can't wait to go and meet the ender leader and have him train me. That's when I suddenly fell through a crack and fell deep down into the mountain and instantly passed out as I hit the ground. I woke up what felt like days later in a dark room that
that was deep underground. I didn't see much, but it wasn't long before I saw a pair of bright purple eyes coming my way. I also realized that the fall had left me at just two hearts, so there was no way that I was fighting this monster. Hey, uh, I don't want any problems. If you let me quickly just go past, I promise I won't cause any problems. I started running away, and I thought I made it past, but as I was making my exits, I heard a snap, and I was teleported right back where I woke up. Filio, the wizard has told me all about you. I know exactly why you are here. You must be the Ender Leader. You must know I'm here to be trained then. When can we start? The wizard may have faith in you, but for me to believe you, you'll need to prove yourself. I've left three puzzles in this mountain. If you manage to clear each one of them and make it out in one piece, I'll teach you everything I know. Bring it on! I started day 62 through 68 off by making my way up a set of stone stairs, after which I made it into a dimly lit room. The floor was completely covered in water, with a parkour course above it leading to the next set of stairs. Does the Ender Leader seriously think I can't jump from block to block? This'll be a piece of cake. I started brushing through the course with ease, until I suddenly felt a sharp sting hit my back and knock me into the water. Ah! This water is so cold! And also, what on earth hit me? I looked up and saw a bunch of dispensers all around that must be fully filled with arrows. Well, that makes this a lot harder. I tried making it up for ages, and it got to a point where all of my armor had broken and I was on low health. I guess it's all or nothing. I have no other choice. I tried one last time, carefully paying attention to the dispensers, and eventually making it up in one piece. That was way too close. I then made my way to the next room, and it was the exact same course, but the water had been replaced with lava. There is no way I'm making it out here alive. But that's when it hit me. I covered the dispensers with cobwebs, and then attempted the course. The webs completely stopped the arrows from reaching me, and I finished the course on the first try. How didn't I think of that earlier? I made my way up one last staircase, but this one was made of quartz. Something really tough has to be at the end of this room for it to be decorated so well. I made my way into the final room, expecting a massive monster, but to my surprise, there was just a little flower person waiting for me. Hey, little one, I don't want to hurt you. How about you just surrender and we can call it a day? The flower didn't seem to care though, so I charged at it, expecting to kill it with just a few hits, but there was just one issue. I couldn't hit it. This guy was super fast, and each time I tried to hit him, he easily dodged my attacks and struck me from behind. And even though he was small, he definitely packed a punch. I know exactly how to handle this guy. I shot my webs all along the floor, which slowed down the flower completely, letting me finish him off with ease. That's when I heard another click, and I was teleported to the peak of the mountain at the Ender Leader's castle. Well done, Spider. I didn't think you could do it. I guess you may be the chosen one after all. Now, get some rest. We'll begin early tomorrow morning. The Ender Leader led me deep into the jungle on day 69 through 74, and we got to work on bettering my spider abilities. We started off by working on my spider leap. I was pretty useless at first, but after hours of training, I was soaring through the air, almost like I was flying, ambushing insects from all angles. The leader then led me to a dense part of the forest to help me work on my aerial ambush. I was dropping down from trees, killing insects left and right. They never saw me coming. Very impressive. I think you're ready for your final task, to defeat the Triceratops who's been threatening to blow my castle up. Wait, what? How on earth would I be ready for that? We've barely started our training. That's not true. The three tasks I made you complete earlier were a part of your training. You just didn't know it yet. How do you think you've been learning so fast here in the jungle? Well, maybe you're right, but my armor is broken. There's no way I stand a chance. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Trust me. I reluctantly agreed and made my way to find the Triceratops, and it wasn't long before I found him. Hey there, you big ugly monster. Bring it on. We charged at each other, fighting with everything we had. The monster was tough, but I was able to get some creative hits on it, thanks to my new training. His hits were really starting to hurt me, and I wasn't sure I'd make it out alive. Ugh, why won't you die? I knew I had to pull off a miracle to kill this thing, but I put my all into it, using my new abilities and skills to the test. And with a combination of everything I had learned, I managed to kill it. I felt a surge of energy through my body, and that's when I became an even larger tarantula, gaining five more hearts. I can't wait to go and tell the Ender Leader that I finished his task. I made it back to the Ender Leader on day 75 through 79 and let him know I killed the Triceratops. Congratulations, Silio. You've become more powerful than I could have ever imagined. Here's a reward for you for completing your training. Take it to the wizard whenever the time is right and he will know what to do with it. He then dropped me a strange looking stone that seemed to be completely useless. Uh, thanks? I guess. I'll be on my way though. I've got to check on my friends.
Good luck, Leo. I started making my way home, and the closer I got, I started hearing explosions. And after looking up, I saw smoke in the sky. Oh no, this can't be good. I made it back home and saw the whole place completely wrecked. I went to check on Ant and his family, and to my delight, they were still alive, but they looked hurt. Silio, <coughs> run away fast. He's still around. He's using us as bait. Leave quick. Look what we have here. The little tarantula from earlier. This time I won't let you escape. You don't have to. I'm going to kill you right here and right now. Just like last time, huh? Bring it on, you little bug. I launched into battle with the turtle, this time feeling my attacks actually managing to hurt it. You think that's enough, little spider? Think again. The turtle once again launched me against a wall, but I landed on one of my cobwebs, which absorbed most of the damage. You got lucky there, you hairy little bug, but let's see how you handle these flames. The turtle caught me off guard and blasted me with a gust of fire, which burned me down to just a few hearts. <coughs> Ouch! He then started advancing towards me, and I knew this was it. I charged up all my strength and leaped over him as he tried to hit me, and I struck him on the top of his head, killing him in one final blow. Silio, you did it! I always knew you had it in you. I woke up early on days 80 through 84, and I knew I had a lot of work to do. After rebuilding my base, I made sure to add stone walls all around it to keep any other bad guys away. I would not let my friends get hurt ever again. As I finished off the walls, Ant's father came up to me. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Silio. Here's a map for you which should lead you to a massive resource vein full of the strongest materials in these lands. I thanked him and headed straight to the listed coordinates. I made it deep underground and carefully made it to the titanium, and to my surprise, I actually wasn't attacked for once. I quickly mined up as much of the ore as I could and used it to craft myself a whole new set of armor and even had enough left over for a sword. I'd like to see the Abyssal Golem try and kill me now. I didn't want to end the day yet though, so I made my way back home and to my surprise, my sheep had left me a giant stack of wool to work with. Thanks so much guys, I'll get right to work. I kept working on my tarantula statue, this time working on finishing off the body and started working on the head. It wasn't long before the statue was finally finished and I was really happy with how it turned out. I woke up on these 85 through 89 to a bunch of animals at our outdoor gates. What are you guys doing here? They told me that the statue had alerted them to a resistance force against the Abyssal Golem's rule, and they wanted a safe place to stay. I've got you guys covered. Come right on in. I realized I couldn't just let them sleep outside, so I built them all a massive house for them to spend the night in, even building a small farm and water supply inside to keep them taken care of. They seemed really happy with their new home, and I was happy to have been able to help them. I wanted to make sure anybody who wanted safety had a place to stay at my base, so I headed out to chop down some more trees to expand my home. But as I was heading out, I heard a massive explosion, way bigger than any of the explosions I had heard before. I rushed back home and saw the Abyssal Golem, but he looked way bigger and stronger than ever before. He had all my friends locked up in cages. Not again! Ugh, I can't keep letting my friends get hurt! I made my way to the Abyssal Golem, who seemed to be unfazed by my presence. How dare you kill my commander and mess with my minions! I've had enough of your meddling. I won't kill you, but I'm taking each and every one of your family and friends with me, and I'm going to torture them for every second of their existence until you surrender yourself to me in my nether layer. You have ten days to do so, or else I'm going to kill each one of your friends. Slowly and painfully, the choice is up to you. Now get out of my sight! The Abyssal Golem slammed his foot into the ground, which sent me flying miles away from home. I have to go and find that wizard so I can stop that evil Abyssal Golem once and for all. I made my way to the wizard's hut on days 90 through 95. It didn't take long for me to get there, but as I did, the hut seemed to have disappeared, and there was no trace of the hut ever existing in the first place. I looked around the area, and to my horror, I found an ender whale dead on the ground. How could this have happened? How can the golem do this to such an innocent and majestic creature? That twisted being has to be stopped. Indeed he does. We live in dark times, Silio. The ender whales are an ancient species who have lived in these jungles for eons. They're the heart of this land. This is the first time in history that one of them has been killed. I'm afraid the abyssal golem may be unstoppable. It may be too late. I don't care how strong he is. I'm going to do whatever it takes to kill him. And that's what brings me here. After I completed my training with the ender leader, he gave me the strange rock and told me you would be able to use it to help me become even stronger. Hmm, I see. I thought he had destroyed each one of the remaining mystical rocks. It 
because of their immense destructive power, but I guess he kept one in case of situations like this. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, if you truly want to try and defeat him and harness the powers of the stone, you will have to transform into a mutant tarantula, and that is an irreversible change. I'll do whatever it takes. I don't care. Now, how can I undergo this transformation? Head to the nether, near the golem's lair. There should be a wishing well hidden in the highest peak overlooking it. Throw the stone into the well, and your wish will come true. But listen to me carefully. Even as a mutant, this will be an incredibly tough fight. So, Cilio, please be careful. I'll do my best. Now, be quick. There should be a nether portal located in the broken temple you found at the start of your journey. I'm on my way. I spent days 96 through 99 making my way back to where this all started. I knew I was on the right tracks when I started seeing the piles of bones getting larger and larger. I have to kill this evil beast to avenge all those who have died to his reign. I finally made it to the broken temple, and just as the wizard had predicted, there was a nether portal inside it. I guess this is it. Time to go and face this evil beast once and for all. I hopped into the portal and found myself in the depths of the nether. I had no idea where to go, but with the help of a couple of local mobs, I made my way to the lair. They seemed to be happy to help me. I guess he's causing havoc in this dimension too. I followed the wizard's instructions and found myself at the top of the highest cliff. And as usual, the wizard was right. There it was, the wishing well. I knew each second I waited was another second that the golem would hurt my friends. So I didn't waste any time at all and threw the stone into the depths of the well. That's when I felt something massive change inside my body. I grew into a massive mutant tarantula, gaining 10 more hearts. Whoa, I feel even stronger than before. Time to go and show that golem who's boss. I finally made my way to the abyssal golem's lair on day 100. And that's when I found my friends all held up in cages right above a massive lake of lava. Wait, is that you, Cilio? You've come to save us, but please be fast. He could be back at any time. The golem was nowhere to be seen, but that's when I heard loud footsteps approaching. Looks like your pathetic little friend didn't decide to show up. Now, which one of you would like to die first? We'll see which one of us is the pathetic one. Come pick on somebody your own size. So you took my advice after all. Your friends can run as much as they want. But the second I'm done with you, I'm killing each and every one of them too. You'll have to get through me first. Now bring it on, you big bully. I rushed at the Abyssal Golem with my new titanium sword, but the Abyssal Golem was still way stronger than I could have thought. I felt my hits digging deep into his skin, but he was hitting me back hard too. This fight could go either way. You are tougher than I thought, but just like a bug, I'm going to crush you where you stand. The Golem then seemed to get an increase of strength, and each of his hits did double the damage it did before. Ah, where is all this power coming from? That's when it hit me. Enjoy your webbed cage, you monster. I shot my webs, forming massive walls of cobweb all around the golem. That's when I hopped up high into the air and broke the roof of the nether, causing a massive stream of lava to fall right onto the golem, engulfing him in the magma completely. No! Yes, Cilio, you did it! The prophecy was true! You were our hero after all! Yes, thank you, Cilio. You saved each and every single one of us. We owe you the world. Would you like me to send you back to your home dimension? As thanks for everything you've done? You know what? I think I found my new home here with you guys. Now let's head back to my place. We have a kingdom to build.